All right. Dunk Elliot Robinson, welcome to the show, brother. Thank you, man. Thank yeah, you for coming in, man. Thank you for having me. Dude, thank we, you all for having me. Oh my god, it's a pleasure, all including the river. So it's like really <laughs> cool to have this guy here. He came highly recommended from a friend of BTV, Mr. Swish. You're an interesting story to me because what, what's continuously happening on the show without us having any agenda for this happening is we keep getting immigrants that are like total bosses. Yeah, yeah it's awesome. Like we like the last we had Edder, we had Raul, we had Swish, we had all these people. We had Foreshta, we had, what? Pedro, I'm just giving you a shout out after shout out. But anyway, she's names. Dude, names, she's the best. So those are, um, so it's, you're born, you were born in Sweden. So I'm half immigrant, is that a thing? Okay, you were, were you born in Sweden? My dad fell in love in Bali with some beautiful Swedish chick. They ended up having me, he moved, he's from America, he's from Boston. So I'm, I was a dual citizen since, I had dual oh, citizenship. So, okay, cool. All right. I'm like an American. So, kind were of. you born in? I was born in Sweden, raised in Sweden, Sweden yeah. and decided somewhere in high school I was like, all right, I want to work for this crazy guy called Gary Vaynerchuk, which is why I moved to New York. Okay, so take us through. Uh, by the way, we love Gary Vaynerchuk. He's a cool guy. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, we, sometimes. <laughs> no. How did that happen? Because, like, I know the story, but I would love you to share or the long, people. or the short, or the funny, or the like serious. Give us, give us, give us all. Give whatever you want. All right, long, short, funny. Yeah. I don't know. All right. So, I started an account. No, no, all right. Let's take it back. Let's take it way back. I was born on June 12th. No, I was born October 3rd, blah, 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 blah. Okay. But I always had a passion for basketball. My dad always raised me. I got number eight. I was Kobe. I was feeling it. Anyways, somewhere along. Basketball's a big thing in, in Sweden? No. No. Okay. It's bigger than people think, but it's not big. Okay. I mean, in the States, it's like huge. Okay. Soccer is big in Sweden. And like ice hockey and shit like that. Anyways. That's cool. Somewhere in high school, I realized, dude, Elliot. You're short, you're not short, but you're kind of not NBA size. Your handles are pretty good, but they're not that good. Your shot is too inconsistent. You're not going to go to the league. And that hit me freshman year of high school. I was like, fuck, I just entered a high school that was for sole reason to play basketball. Okay. I got to do something with these skills that I have, right? Okay. But even before that, I was always doing video editing. I was editing like Call of Duty, like all these video games. Cool. But back in the day, I think I made like... Four dollars off of that total. That was the biggest thing ever. It was your first entrepreneurial yeah, gig. Exactly. Four dollars is more, four dollars more than most thirteen year olds or fourteen year olds are making. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. Anyways. Anyways, I started making. <laughs> <laughs> I started making a basketball basketball edits yeah. in somewhere in high school. I was like, I'm not going to go to the NBA, so I should probably do something out of my of my basketball skills. So I started. I saw that there was a white space on Instagram. I'd always been on Instagram. Yep. No one was posting highlights. No one was posting dope edits. So I decided I was going to be posting dope edits. I called the account Dunk. Yep. D U N K. Yep. And so, and Dunk is, we'll flash it up, but it's, it is literally a collection of basketball highlights. It's an aggregate media account that aggregates the, the, the top. It started off being completely NBA. Then I was like, wait a minute, when I had 500,000 followers, I might get copyright, copyright infringed. So, what I first did, I reached out to the MBPA, the Players Association. They granted me access and permission to use their content, cool. but I was still like, I don't feel 100% comfortable, so I geared away from the NBA and started doing more aggregate content, such as all these highlights. There's so much aggregate content that's not NBA related. And where do you get basketball. Where do you get it? I source it from Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I mean, like, it's like, where do you get your inspiration? It's not the same thing, but like, I, it's come so naturally yep. to me and like the people that I work <laughs> with. We've been in it for so long that we just know the right place. We know the accounts that post it. We get submissions. We we sort we look at hashtags the top nine on hashtags like there's just a, so many places to find it you can't pinpoint exactly where to get so it. So then the next question I have for you. So now let's just say you, you took, have all the content. You right? have all the content. How do you How, get big? But here's the, before that, do you contact Nick and Thomas who are the who are two of the five Twitter accounts and say yo I just use your content like. Do you want to send love good, to my good. page or not? So there's all right. There's diff now we get into even more detail. Okay. There's different okay. types of Twitter accounts you can go to. You can go to aggregate accounts, which are aggregating from other people. Okay. Or you can go directly to those people. people. You can right. go to Dexton Four on Instagram, yep. which is like he jumps like a freak. You can go to those type of people and d d directly get get permission from them. 
the route that most people are taking right now, I'm not saying it's right, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm in the place where most I get access from most people because I, if I comment on their most recent picture and say, hey, look at your DMs, they're going to respond. And they, they go because they see 2.2 million. Exactly. Or 6 .5 and everyone, I'm not saying everyone, I've gotten, to come in, I've gotten into issues, but if you're respectful towards and give rightful credit, people yeah. are going to allow you to use their content. Okay. If they're not MBA, like if they're not the MBA. Okay. And then do they send, do, do you, are you able to siphon some of the attention of their audiences onto your page? Are they like, are they cool with that? Yeah. 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 It's, it, it all depends on the size of your account and how you are as a human being. What if you're just getting started when you had a thousand followers? I was early. I, I can't speak to that because I wasn't doing it early. I, early on, I was only using NBA content, right? right? And the way I was growing was just like by going into ha this was 2013, guys. People weren't way on Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Like people, it wasn't saturated. People weren't. If now, if you get a follow and two likes from someone, you're just not gonna check their profile out. Right. Back then, I liked and commented. Like, 80% of people were gonna check my profile out. And I was smart on like, I'm not saying I'm smart, I'm just saying I was doing smart things back then at least. Yep. I went into basketball, and I went into hashtag dunk, I went into this, this and that, and I commented and people siphoned to my, to my page. Interesting. So you liked this aggregation of content. That was like the it's, way that you built up at dunk. Yeah, I think being an aggregator, or let's, let's take it back for people who don't know aggregation or whatever, Make it into like music. You're a DJ. There's yeah. value in being yeah. a DJ, right? Yeah. If you're DJing content, you're saving people's time. And like Gary always says, time is the most valuable asset that we have to, in today's society. Yeah. If you're an account that saves people time and you post the best highlights and you post the best content and people know to go there for to tag their friends and just to see what's hot in society, you're gonna win. Really interesting. Yeah. Now, so so then you create this account. Yep. It blows up. You go from thousand to two point two. But how do you blow up? So. If, Again, even before that, I, you, I love that you want to jump right there because you're just like you want to. I jump just want to go. Um, before before you blew up, were you ever worried that and 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 maybe it, it's happened or maybe it hasn't mm -hmm. happened? I don't know your personal situation, mm -hmm. but like, were you ever worried that you that this would prevent you from building out you, Elliot, as a brand, and all of a sudden you're just a place that people come for and, like and for highlights without? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I just never thought about building my personal like that I, wasn't an important thing to you. I is twenty thirteen in high school. I wasn't gonna be a motivational like I still don't want to be a motivational speaker because I don't know shit about life. I want to be able to give people advice on Instagram and Snapchat yeah. and, and how you can actually monetize your Instagram and monetize your Snapchat. And it's not selling courses or anything. I just want like consulting, et cetera, et cetera. I haven't even gotten into that, so I haven't even thought about that. The reason I started building Elliot, which is my personal brand, was just. I just wanted to have a more personal connection with my fans. I wanted people to know who I actually was, who's the man behind the account. And are, pe are people now making that correlation between Dunk and Elliot? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've siphoned 38,000 people from Dunk who just want to follow me, and that's through literally commenting on my own stuff, saying, hey, follow Elliot if you see this. Interesting. It's literally cool. basically all I do. All right, so then let's get to the part yes. that you've been dying to talk about, which no, is no, then, how do, you, then well, how do you blow up? When you have... You, you have, so you have the content, you're an expert in content, you have an account, you have a hundred followers, right? Yep. How the fuck do you get to two thousand, million. ten thousand, a hundred thousand, two million? First step, I call it the five C's, right? This is like, I, I really like to I call it the five C's. First is content. We have that on point. Yep. And I don't want to get into that because everyone knows what good content post good content that's engaging. The second is com com community. Once you have a hundred followers, if you don't engage with them at a hundred, what, to, like, if, let me take it back. If you don't engage with people at 100, you're not gonna engage with them at 10,000. You're gonna, oh, when I have 10,000, I'll start responding. No, if you start engaging with people at 100, people are gonna remember at that, at 1,000, 10,000, a million. And it's just it's just such a good value prop. Like, building a personal connection with your audience is one of the most important things that you can that's do. That's great. So that's the second C. That's What's the second that? C. The third C is community number two, which is if you have zero followers or 100 followers, you gotta find somewhere to find someone else. You can go into other communities similar to yours. So let's say you're a basketball account or soccer account, et cetera, et cetera. You can start diving into the comment section of other people's accounts and posts. And obviously you don't want to be too spammy of like, oh, I'm looking for people followers. Provide them with some sort of value. Or like, my name is Dunk Wannabe. Yeah. I have 100 followers. Yeah. What I should be doing is going into the Dunk comment section and start engaging. I I dunk, ask a question almost every single one of my posts. That's something you should also do. Ask questions because that drives comments and that brings engagement up, blah, blah, blah. Um, ask, ask, I ask a question. I, the most recent post I had was, is Kevin Durant better than Le LeBron James? I already have like 2,000 comments of people debating like, yes, no, yes, yes. 
if I was dunk wannabe, I would go into that comment section and I'd be resp- responding to like a hundred comments of like, why do you think KD is not better than LeBron? Like his numbers last season proved that he, first of all, he was an all-star finals MVP. They won the game. Yes, I understand your argument that he joined a super team that were already overpowered and now they're even more So that's interesting. You're actually going in and engaging with another question. Yeah, you're engaging yeah. with another community. You, but, but right, but you're going in to the other community. Yep. And then you are engaging with a question to the question. Yeah. The question to the comment to the question. The question section. So is that is that is that true? Like, is it because that's different? Like, that's actually way smarter than, uh, oh yeah, I think LeBron's great too. Smiley face. Check me out at dunk. Like, yeah. No, I think you need to provide some sort of value. I think exactly what you say. I think we're saying the same thing. I just think that I think LeBron's great too. Is just not providing any value it's towards just anyone. Opinion, but it's just like question, cool. man. It's kind of like wait, who, and then and then it's like who is this guy? And, then and sudden, if they click the profile and you have good content, so everything you do is only a gateway for people to, to go to to go to you. Yeah. No, everything you do is just a gateway for people to discover you. Yeah. They might discover you and think you suck. Yeah. And then no one's gonna follow. Yeah, which comes back sure. to Number content, one. right? Yeah. So there's content community one community square. Community yeah. square. I should actually call it just community squared, right? right? Um, the fourth I'll send one, you an invoice tomorrow. Go ahead. <laughs> the fourth one is collaboration. This one is, I think, is, is the it's most. Used, right? Actually, let's do this. Let's do consistency first. So, content, community squared, consistency. Yeah. Consistency is you have to have consistency in the way you, if you're interacting with the dunk community. You have to have consistency in posting four or five times a day and like actually engaging with the comments. Four, four or five times a day you're posting? If you're an aggregate media account, yes, because there's so oh. much noise. Not, I don't think for you, I think yours is once, once a day, maybe twice a day. Um, but consistency, you gotta be posting. And so many people give up after what? I have so many, I'm not knocking anyone, but I have so many people say, hey, hell yeah, please, can you help, like, please, can you help me with my Instagram profile? I'm like, cool, post content every day for a year. And then come back to me. And then come back to me. And I'm not being like, oh, I don't have time for And after like 12 weeks, they're like, oh. No, after like two, three weeks, they're just not doing anything. And I don't think I've actually had anyone come back to me after a year of doing it and not be successful. Like, That's really interesting. You know what Do I mean? you think they stop just because there's not immediate They're, satisfaction? Yeah. yeah. It's instant gratification. We have so our attention yeah, span yeah. and our, like, we just want dopamine like ASAP and we just don't want the patience or whatever you want. All right. So Dunk, go back to number four, the C number four collaboration. Collaboration. This is the biggest one by far. If you have nothing, no followers, you need to find what you can bring to others in exchange for exposure or this or this or that. And I actually think life is about value exchange. Yep. And if you if you are Dunk Wannabe, once again, I'm gonna yep. use Dunk Wannabe, yep. and you see Dunk, you see this profile, by the way, every single account with roughly two million and under followers checks their DMs every day and you can get through to them. Interesting. If Dunk Wannabe DM'd me and said, hey, Dunk, I wanna do something for you. I wanna work for free. I wanna source this content for you. I wanna source content every morning. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and bring you the most high quality content. I'm doing it for free. All I ask for is like that you tag me on your story once a day or you tag me in a post once a day. You would do it? Yes. If they if they actually gave me good content, eight pieces of content every morning that I could post with a caption and everything, I'd hundred percent do it. Do people do it? Have people hit no. you up with that? Yes, but it's not good content. No. It is either A not good content or they do it for one day and like they're like fuck this is taking too long okay like, they, the other is if you actually have a decent following of a thousand ten thousand followers like? i think ten thousand you can do real damage i think because that's like the point well actually before you get into that yep when wh- how come i can't swipe up on my stories and like you need to be a business account and have over ten thousand followers and then you can do swipe and at ten thousand you get verified no, you get the swipe up function at ten thousand yeah always verification is through some people i've been getting mixed else. reviews about that mm-hmm. Some about the say, swipe up? Yeah, some people say that they have the 12,000 they can't swipe up. Some people, but I think it's because it's not a business account. You need to connect your That's Facebook. Why. You need to connect your Facebook to your Instagram. By the way, Facebook and Instagram are going to be like the same thing. Like every single feature that Instagram is rolling out, I mean, it's owned by Facebook, yeah. is becoming Facebook, like more and more. Even now, I don't know if you guys seen, but there's a scroll function on the video, so you can skip forward in videos now. Crazy. It's becoming the same thing. Anyways. On Instagram videos? Yes. Wow. And then soon, I, I didn't know that. Soon they're gonna. You heard her first. Soon they're gonna uh, do uh, ads. They're gonna do pre-roll ads, mid-roll ads. They're, they're gonna be doing all this stuff. They just want to make money. How soon do you think before the? You know, Facebook now is at a one percent organic mm-hmm. reach. Mm-hmm. Instagram something like forty. 
How soon be, before do you think that goes down? Before it goes down? I mean, I think Instagram is getting more and more crowded by the day, and, and people are following more and more people, and by the, with their algorithm change, and, and that them introducing not being chronological, but being based off of good content rises yeah. to the top. Right now, we're in an era that Facebook was in also. If you studied Facebook back in the day, there was, an, there was like a time of five to six, five to 12 months where Facebook was figuring out their algorithm of how to feed the audience. So I think the algorithm is a good thing because I think it feeds what people are most interested in. It's it's the biggest difference, I think. It's between, capitalism. Well, and it's not only that, but it's the biggest difference between Twitter and Facebook. And Facebook and yeah. Like Twitter just put it all out there it's and sloppy. that's why they lost. I, I think that's why they lost so much. Too attention. much. It's, it's, the, the algorithm is, is too sloppy. Do you want to know like yeah, what the Instagram, I definitely want to know. Instagram algorithm is? Yeah. Algorithm works as a leaderboard for every, if you're new on the, so if you create a new account, you're new on the leaderboard, right? They throw you into the bottom of the leaderboard. If you, every piece of content you post, Instagram ranks. If it performs well, you'll move up in the leaderboard. What does well mean? Does if it performs over the previous post, if it performs, Oh, and, and I there's a million different variants. Like if it performs in 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 terms of like who's liking it, yep. how many followers the people that are liking it had, how many who who are commenting on it, how many people are saving this. Yeah. If it performs well, if it performs, if it if it over indexes what you should have, yep. they put you up on the leaderboard. Okay. This is the algorithm. Okay. And the more you move up the leaderboard, the more people they will serve it to. The more people that follow you, and the more people they will serve on the explore feed, which is that little button. Not bottom left, but second to bottom yeah. left. And is there any way that you can see where you're at on the leaderboard? No, no. It's just I mean, it's all internal. It's seeing how your how your posts are engaged. Yeah. Uh, like this, by the way, is not an official Instagram algorithm. How it works. This is just what I really strongly believe in. And by being on Instagram, I know that for a fact is pretty much true. I think if you have over a hundred thousand followers, you should be posting a lot. Okay, so a hundred thousand is the number. Not really, but like you, you it's so we could go like know, it's so know, subjective know, and you know, it's so I know. like I don't know. All right, so Dunk, next the next piece is the collaboration. Yeah. So you mentioned that the fourth pillar of your five C's is collaboration. Mm -hmm. One is to find people that are dunk like free or work, in your work. Give them some free work, but, but, but what's what no, is that? Another one is like if you're a wannabe dunk, there's five other wannabe dunks who also have 10,000 followers, yep. you should be cross-pollinating your guys' audiences and saying, hey, wannabe dunk two, wannabe dunk one goes to wannabe dunk yep. two and says, hey, uh, we should do something. We should. I should post a post that says, hey, go follow wannabe dunk two, and you should post a post where it says, hey, go follow wannabe dunk one. That's interesting. So it doesn't work the same with personal brands because you don't want to be like yeah. posing for everyone else. But if you're a media aggregate account, which I'm pretty like heavily invested yep. in and have been doing for a while, yep. that's the way I grew from ten thousand to hundred thousand to hundred thousand to a million. I, I went to similar profiles and I tagged them in my post and they tagged me in their post. That's cool. That's great advice, actually. Yeah. How how difficult is it? How much easier is it? Do you think to build a big following as an aggregator mm -hmm. versus a personal brand? I think it's a lot easier to do as an aggregator. As an aggregator. You, you just have so much more to choose from. As a personal brand, you're so it's, you're, you're so internal. It's you. Yeah. And you, what I always believe in, don't speak about shit you don't know. Yeah. So then it's even less. It's not even right. you and what you know. Right. It's what you actually know, you know. You it's, know. That, no. it's very true. So yeah, you would actually say if you're 15, 16, 17, 18, 21, 25 years old, yeah, the best kind of entry into the market is to be an aggregator. It's, it's, it's just a, DJ. It's to be a DJ if you want to. By the way, not everyone should or will have right. to or have talent to be. But like, if you love piano and you you just exactly. can't play exactly. piano, like you don't know. Yep. Or even if you can, or if you can, even if you can play piano, I would suggest building a piano aggregate account that that highlights the best piano players in the world, and then every now and then start plugging your, yourself. Cool. I think you're gonna have a lot more success and quicker quicker success because everyone wants it quick than if you were to build your own personal piano brand. So you built all of this while you were in Sweden? Yeah, okay. in high school. In high school. Okay, how did you end up in New York? I stumbled upon this character called Gary Vaynerchuk on Instagram. Yep. On first glance, I wasn't too sold on him. I thought it was a little too much and I didn't really think he knew what he spoke about. But then I, two months later, I saw him again. I was like, I, I'll give this guy a shot. Consistency, right? Yep. He was advertising on some media accounts. I gave him a shot and I was like, all right, fuck, he actually really knows what he's talking about. Started following him, started like taking notes instead. In class, I was watching videos, taking notes. I'm like, oh, this is what you should be doing. And I was like, fuck it, I'll DM him. So I DM'd him on Instagram, which by the way, DMing on Instagram is the hack in culture right now. You can get to basically anyone, you can get to any celebrity. Yep. 
almost anyone. Anyways, I DM'd them on Instagram. And I was like, hey, I want to do something with you. And was it literally, hey, I want to do something with you? I could pull it up. Should I pull it? No, it's okay. It was like, hey, love your stuff. It was actually the first one. It says, hey, love your stuff. No response. I was like, fuck you. <laughs> no, I didn't like to say that. But then, like, to then a month, then a month, uh, a month after, I decided, all right, let me DM him again because he didn't respond. Uh, didn't respond again. I was like, fuck, all right, I'll go on Snapchat. I hit him up on Snapchat. I was like, yo, we've been, actually, he did respond. He just sent their heart. I was like, cool. And then, then we interact on Snapchat roughly one month later than that. I was like, hey, we've been inter- interacting a little bit. He's like, all right, email me. He sent his email. She, she said, set up a call. I emailed. No response. I followed up. Got a response. And I was like, yeah, I'll be in London. Uh, you'll, be, you'll be in London. He said, I'll be in London for my book tour. Do you want to meet with me? I was like, sure. I took off school. I said I told everyone I was sick. I missed like a science class. I like got I got like a C in that class or something just because I le- actually left and went to London for a fifteen minute meeting with them in a l- hotel lobby. That's so funny. Met with fifteen minutes, turned into forty five minutes. Then all of a sudden he's like, "Hey, Don, here's my number. If you want to grab dinner with me and the team tonight, feel free to." He left. I was like, "What the fuck just happened?" Did you pitch him working for him or was it just kind no, of the meet and greet? No, I just I was like, "Hey, this is what I do." This is I like your content, I like what you're putting out, and then I just told him who I was and what I did. Yep. And then I had dinner, I flew back to Sweden, graduated high school, didn't hear anything for like one or two months actually. Four days before I moved here, actually funnily enough, no, let's take it back, I didn't hear anything for two months. I kept texting him like, hey, you should be doing this on Instagram, trying to provide value, yep. right? Like, yep. I was practicing doing your thing, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then finally he was like, done. I didn't understand. He's like, done. I was like, what does he mean, done? <laughs> like, am I done? Like, I fucked up? And then he was like, done. You're working for me. I was like, yeah. He's like, where do you want to live? Uh, London or New York? I was like, wow. London is interesting, but New York is always New my York. dream. He's like, all right, what do we got to do? Visa, blah, blah, blah. Like, what's it? Is, that, is it called Visa? Yeah. I was like, nope. I'm an American citizen. He's like, oh. perfect. Perfect. Yeah. And so you could slide right in. And then I just... Graduated high school, and so like, and so you graduated high school, and then you moved to New York, and you're working. You currently work at VaynerMedia, correct? I actually left or stepped down from my role two days ago. Oh man, congrats! Yeah. But you know that's cool. It's so, super cool. So I'm super. I'm still working out of there. You know. Yeah. So yeah. Tell us really quickly what you did while at VaynerMedia. Yep. How long were you there? I was there for a little over a year. I started in July 2016. Okay. <clears throat> but while I was there, I started off as a video editor, which was oh, not wow. stupid, but. I was good at video editing, but I should have been doing social growth, which was my main role. Yep. So essentially what I did, uh, we figured out, hey, Elliot, we know that this influencer space is super tight. They were running influencer ads before. They're like, but why don't you do it? That's your expertise, right? I was like, yeah, why didn't we think of that before? I started, I headed that project of growing Gary's Instagram, and obviously it was a team effort. I had a team of like five people, like people were creating content, people were doing this, people were doing that, but that was kind of my baby, and the project I was spending most of my time on, yeah. and I was literally growing Gary's Instagram and when we started in November, if I'm not mistaken, until uh, the, until January 2017. So last year, November to this year, January, uh, we grew like we grew 400,000 in like two months or whatever it was. Wow. So we went from 600 to a million. We're like, fuck, all right, there's real there's real power in it. And you did all that on the back of influencers? Exactly, so t- 100% so on the back of influencers. So for people that don't know what that means, yeah. like, you know, yep. we're living in the world, but yep. like, people are like, wait, wait, influencers, what does that mean? What is an influencer? And then let's get real practical about like how did you do that for him? What were the strategies? Yeah. Who did you reach out to? Yeah. to? Help people understand what that looks like. So influencers is, is basically anyone who has influence, but that's like very vague. But what were you looking for? We were looking for the dunks of the world, right? The media accounts, the aggregate accounts. There's so many people you follow them, like the boy with no job, the at L M A O on Instagram. All these accounts that post funny memes or sh- like. They post funny shit, right? Yep. But no one thinks of them as actual people behind the accounts. They just think it's an account, right? Okay. What I discovered since I've been in this space for so long is, hey, these are all 15, 16, 17, 18 year old kids. By the way, this should be a documentary. Me and my, my guy Andy over at Vayner, we talk about it all the time. This should be a documentary. Someone should make this documentary. It's gonna blow up. There's 15, 16, 17, 18 year old kids running these accounts in between math and science. That's funny. They're in school, they're in high school, in between math and science. They're posting shout outs, which we call them, which is when I say, hey, follow this, hey, follow that, yep. for each other. They're growing, they have millions of followers. The way yep. they make money is people approach them, like Fit T. You, you know what Fit T is? Can you give me a shout out? Exactly, yep. can you give me a shout out? They say, 100 bucks or yeah. 50 bucks, whatever. For 100 bucks, for 60 bucks, for 50 bucks. The good thing with these influencers is that they do it so much, 
that they're they're very cheap. No, the good thing with these influencers are that they're underpriced. Yep. They charge a hundred dollars for a shout out for three hours, and after that they take it down for yep. three hours, yep. and they have eight million, six million, five million, ten million yep. followers. Yep. We'll, ten million potential people. Obviously, not all are going to see it, yep. but ten million potential people. That will follow. It's a good number. Yeah, it's a really good number. So you said, all right, there are all these different media aggregate yep. accounts, and Gary, and, and the reason you focus on, let's just stick with the banner. Yep. The, the reason you focus on media aggregate accounts was what? Because they're underpriced. They're the most underpriced, and they're easy. They're easy to interact with. It's not like going through the managers. There's kids that live in the Pakistan, Sweden, like wherever, like. You, I literally don't know where they live. I just know them through an application called Kick and Telegram. Cool. That's where that's where they live. That's Kick where they are. Actually, not Telegram. You you that you won't reach them there. Kick and Instagram DMs is where you where you where you get the real meat of where they sell shoutouts and where you can buy shoutouts. Cool. And so you then allocated a, 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 an amount of money. Yep. And you what, made lists of who these people were. And then you just DM them. Yep. And like, hey, I work for this guy Gary. Yep. He's motivational yep. and interesting yep. and funny. And yep. would you want to do what? What are your prices? Is what you ask. What are your prices? But to, to would it be you would provide them with a video that you made about yes. him, or yep. would it be like, hey, follow Gary V with a picture of him? It it could be either. We did some. We, so there's different type of strategies for getting people to follow. There was one where there, were, which initially they were doing before I was on the team, which was like. Plugging quote cards or like plugging like motivational quotes or plugging videos. What we saw work the best, and which I pushed it a lot, and they were like, "I'm not sure about it. This is brand equity, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. But then we all agreed as a team that it's going to be the best thing because it performs better. Are memes? Memes are like a white. If you have a video, you zo- all right. So this is your this is your square video space, right? You have a video is usually fully in the space in this space. A meme is when you zoom it out, it becomes smaller, and then you put text on the top. Everyone knows them, everyone's seen them. The reason they perform well is because what I call is com- it's because it's comfortable for people who view it. It's consumable. They're comforting for the people viewing it. They're comforting for the people viewing it because they feel they, they can relate to it. They're, they they've seen it before, right? So memes is what we they're safe. Yeah. They're they they they're like oh what's I know what this is. It's not some. It's like going to the. I'm, I was gonna do the, some club analogy, but I'm not 21, so I can't go to the clubs in New York, so I can't oh. do that analogy. Anyways, we did memes, and they performed very well. And the memes, then at that point, like uh, uh, you created them. We created and them, and they would be what 30 to 60 second videos. 30 to 60 second video, capturing video title. If you hate Monday mornings, watch this. Like, yeah. If you're a student in school, watch this, yep. and they'd all be tailored towards the type of account it was. If it was school account, it'd be if you're if you're a student in school, watch this. That's cool. So now th- you reach out, you ask the price, they give you a price, they give a shout out. You see this massive growth. Yep. Um, how you know? I don't know if you can answer this question, yep. but if you don't, don't worry about it. You can't. But how much money do you recommend people spending on this kind of stuff? If you see rich. Of course, trial and error, right? Like A B testing, et cetera, et cetera. Try like out for accounts. Four hundred thousand to two million. How yeah. much do you think you spent on influencers? I know. I don't wanna I don't wanna disclose the amount. Yeah. But what I would say to people is yeah, yeah. look, grab a list, get all the prices. You can get started well. If you spend two to three hundred, four hundred, five hundred bucks on shout outs, yep. you can very well see if you're getting returns or not. Cool. Like very, very well. I'd start there and I'd say, all right, these accounts are performing the best. Let's triple down on those. Let's put even more in the budget. And how much of your concern was, are these people that will start to follow us genuinely interested, interested? in the content? I think, I mean, if you take the time to not only A, consume a video piece of video content, B, Click the button of Gary V. C. Click follow. follow. Right. I think. I think. Yeah. So of that, course, there are going to be people that do it and then never interact with the content. But that's that's going to happen either way. How do you know that these people that are selling shoutouts aren't getting you robot followers? It's a very valid question. You look at the people that are engaging with the content. You look at the people that are following you. So you, you've already done that diligence before you reach out to them. So like you would look up LMAO. Yeah. You would click on their re- recent post. 40,000 likes, 100. You look at who's commenting on it. Exactly. You look at who's commenting. You look who's liking it. You look at who's following them. If you look at the first 50, 
this is real deep. Like this is real good pe- for people. Like this, is some real this is, shit. Yeah, dude, it's good. I, 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 I want to. I want to bring the value to people. Exactly. So yeah. you look at the people that are following them. If you look at the recent twenty, and they're all robot followers, or they're all followers that are private and are following more than two thousand people. Chances are they probably aren't as many real followers as you think, right? Yep. And then you look at after the shout outs gone, you look at before and after the shout out, you look you can look at socialblade.com, you can look at how 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 you're how you're growing. You look at before and after what your follower numbers are and then you look at who were those new followers. Yep. Were they only people that were private and following five thousand people, then they're probably not real. Or were they only clicked to get followers, they're probably not real. And in which case oh, so you're doing the socialblade.com bef- as you're betting or after the followers have come over? You do it before you see how many followers you have. You do it after you see how many followers you have. You have though. You're not. You're not social being their accounts. You can't do that, right? You can use social rank, which is social another rank. one. Social rank, which can like you can see where their audience is from, et cetera, et cetera. But no, I wouldn't do that. That would. It's too much. Work. I, it's it's too much work, and I don't think the return. Yeah, the the return on work is just not. The ROI is just not there. So so that's really interesting. And then of of the. So you're making these lists. You're looking at aggregate accounts mm-hmm. you're hitting your dm now are you dming them in that aggregate account so are you dming dunk or are you trying to find elliot and dming elliot you can't find the person behind the account because okay. a lot of these people are they want to say between, they probably between, I, between, between I, I actually don't think they pay taxes so <laughs> no no i literally do not think they pay tax everything is done through paypal i don't think they pay taxes and i think the IRS is going to oh that's them interesting over. All right, so other other things in the Instagram influencer world that like four hundred thousand to two point two million is yeah. really really impressive yeah, over the you. course of the year. Yeah, really awesome job, man. What else? What else can you attribute that success to? To why we grew? Yeah. Aside from Gary is obviously the good, super talented dude. Like, yeah. But what other tactics were you able to use that other people that maybe aren't as good as Gary can use? In terms of Instagram or social in general, both. Like both? Yeah. I think any like kind of gems you have that you would like to share. Like you said, I was very fortunate to have a client being Gary, who's super talented. He knows yeah. what he's talking about. He has someone following him around every day, yeah. producing content. But what I would say is producing content and then the mi- having having a pillar show and then producing micro content under that. So you have this pillar yep. show, right? Yep. After this, you put a 60 second clip on Facebook, a 60 second clip on Instagram stories, a 15, 30 second clip on Instagram, like, and yep. just like, or quote card on Instagram and then even Pinterest, I don't, you shouldn't be doing Pinterest. No, it's not Pinterest. No, it's not Pinterest. Right. Pinterest it's a Tumblr or anything. So like create, having a piece of pillar content and then yep. creating micro content from that, I think is a good way. Cool. And then in, in terms of dis- other distribution collaboration mm-hmm. pillar, what other what other things are you seeing that really works? I mean aside yeah, I mean, from influencers. In terms of collaborating, I don't know. Like if you have if you have people like me on the show and having me promote it, yeah. a- after I get off the show you should be creating my best answer of this, sending it to me as an Instagram story and saying, Hey Elliot, if you if you'd like, please please do a swipe up, you know what I mean? And get if you have actually, and of course you have to balance it, like you don't want to be annoying, like push, yeah, push, yeah. push, but yeah. like balancing it, if you create actual good content for me, I'll post it. Cool, that's smart. And then um, what other what other influencer gems do you the, do, do you recommend? So you recommended Kick, is, and Kick is where you can find influencers Kick, to- no, you find, so Kick is a messaging platform. Okay. Most influencers have their Kick in their Instagram bio. So you'll see, it says Kick, one two three four five. Then you go to kick and you push in one two three four five, and you contact says, "Hey, I saw you on Instagram. What are your prices?" And can you DM what are your prices on Instagram as well? Yeah, you can. You should. You should. Is that both. also the part of the strategy? Yeah. Thing. So you did kick and you did the Instagram DM. I was fortunate enough because I'd been in the network and knew all these people, so I'd be like, "Yo, homie, I got a new client for you. You're gonna make money. Give me good prices." How long do you think this lasts? How much longer does this last? This influencer world. I think so. Just, I think. I mean, it's a prediction, right? But like, what do you think? I think it's already dying down in terms of these kids because Instagram recently launched the branded content, which means they're gonna want everyone who does something that they're paid for is gonna be branded, and then Instagram's gonna take a cut of twenty percent of everything you sell. On. Billion dollar market. Sorry for cutting you off. There's yeah, a billion I, dollar. I think it's more. I think it's like two or three billion, isn't it? I mean, a bi- billion dollar market of pe- that people don't even know about, which is all the the kids. They're selling thousands and thousands of shout outs and also like this hashtag ad that people aren't doing, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I think it's over a billion dollars. I'm gonna say billion because that's what I feel comfortable with, of things not being documented and Instagram is asking themselves, hey, wait a minute, why aren't we taking a 20% cut? That's $200 million to our, to our, to our company and 
revenue. And how are they finding out? They're going to be finding out by doing this. Dunk, not as smart as Dunk, at, not as, at layup. Yep. <laughs> at layup is going to post a piece of content after Instagram. So first what they do, Instagram is going to say, hey, you need to do branded content on everything you sell. Everything you sell and every month, all the money you make, you need to not, not hashtag ad, but like branded partnership, the new feature that they launched. They're going to tell that to everyone. They're going to say to, uh, send out a wide email and they're going to say that. Step two, at layup is going to post something that's paid. They're not going to do branded content. Step three, Instagram is going to shut the page down. Step four, Instagram is not going to give the page back. Step five, people are going to start freaking out. They don't want their page shut down. Step six, everyone's going to do the random content. <laughs> step seven, some people might not, but keep step eight, people just do not they don't want, want to risk. They don't want to take like the you risk. You would never risk losing your. Oh, fuck. No. Like, yeah, fuck. Yeah. Years of work yeah. so you don't tax 20%. Like, come on. Why would you, why would you do that? That's really interesting. Step nine, nine, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Step nine, Instagram they care about their own native advertising, right? You can do advertising to influencers and you can also go through their power and do native Instagram advertising spend. Step nine is more people do that because it's gonna become it's cheaper. Safer. Oh, it's cheaper. It's gonna become, because people are gonna drive their prices up, I think. If it's 20%, they're gonna drive their prices up because they wanna, it's still gonna be valuable, but not as many people are gonna do it. A lot of people are, are trying to figure out how to use social to yep. sell, yep. right? Yep. And like, it's, I get that. I think that's a it's a real thing right yep. now, right? It needs to be taken seriously. What are you selling? Like, what does Dunk sell? Yeah, it's, I mean, Dunk sells brand partnerships, right? Like, like I've said, I've worked with Nike, I've worked with Curve Fragrances. So Nike Gatorade. comes to Dunk. So Nike was sourced through an agency that I had. Okay. So there's like influencer agencies who source these deals, right? Nike came to the influencer agency and said, "Hey, we have this budget. We want to do something." They say, "Hey, Dunk, you're a perfect fit for this. Do this." And then they pay they pay me a cut. Nike pays them this, Nike pays that. And then I was like wait a minute, why don't I reach out to people through my network directly and do direct so I don't have to pay this cut to the influencer agency? And recently I haven't monetized Dunk at all. I've, I've, I've actually not been focused on Dunk at all, okay. which is why I stepped down from Vayner because I wanted to give it to you. Because you want to go back into it. Exactly. I have, I have this, these massive assets. It's like real estate, right? I have this massive yep. social media real estate yep. that I was just letting sit and no one was cleaning the house. No one was building it up. It was just... It was it being cleaned like once a week, like very like sloppily, and I wanted to clean it every fucking day and build it. So what's next? What's the plan? So what's next is is getting people to run these accounts. I have people who are running them. Mine, who have mine, who have Scotty, I have Caleb. I have what do people, you mean running these accounts? Posting, aggregating content every day and doing share for, for shares. you, for with me, with. So to flesh that out for us. You I have dunk. I have dunk. Yep. I oversee. I don't have. I've built several. I've dunk. I've hoop films. I've filthy hits. I've dunks. I've these are videos. All, these are curry. all Instagram accounts. Yeah, I have curry. Then I have that's Facebook. where the six point five million million comes from. Like all of those. Four. I think it's four million on Instagram. Then I have Facebook. I have Stephen Curry Central. I have a, a Kyrie Irving fan page. Then I have Snapchat. I have dunk Central. I have another comedy Snapchat as well. Then I have YouTube, which is Dunk Daily. Anyways, all of these are not being run properly right now. I know exactly what the fuck to do. And what what do you have to do? I have to run five to ten pieces of content every day that yep. are engaging yep. on these media accounts. I need to be sharing. I need to be breaching the Hispanic and the Spanish market. I need to be breaching the Chinese market. Basketball is huge there. Yep. I need to be breaching new markets such as the fashion. There's so many fashion accounts that I could be doing collaborations with. Yep. There's this one called Upscale Hype on Instagram, for example. They post super... And as you... Maybe you don't all know, but like NBA players are getting more and more into fashion. It's always been like kind of a... In the 2000s, when like they banned like the the saggy pants of Allen Iverson, it's always been kind of an iconic NBA thing. Yeah. Now more than ever, they're all wearing the off white, the trendy, the trendy clothes. There's this account that aggregates NBA fashion. I should be doing collaborations with them. Dunk X Upscale Hype of like them sharing them sharing a content of like what do you think of LeBron in this piece of clothing and like via Dunk and I should be reposting it and saying via Upscale Hype. Smart. But those type of things yeah. that I know everything is like that I want to be in work. I'm just not tired. I'm just I think my time is not best spent being very like in there doing it all myself. I can't either because there's so many accounts now. I need to delegate and being smart with time management and also focusing more on brand partnerships to kind of to kind of get 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 the money into the company yep. and then to a, pay employees, but also reinvesting it into the accounts of saying yep. like, hey, like like buying shout outs from all these other big pages and just feeding into Dunk. Like, are you gonna put together that kind of- For my media network. Yeah. yeah. 
similar and just cross pollinating a lot more. Also, this is something there, there's an issue in, in with all these media accounts. They don't own their content and they don't own their audience. That's the biggest. They don't own their content. They don't own their content. They are aggregating from all other places. They they don't. Dexton might give them permission, which is awesome. Then they half half own the content. They can't get. But did the, you own the content for Dunk? Do you? You don't either. So you don't own. So what does that mean? What does that mean? It means that a I have to aggregate a lot more from people I know and the network I've built out of the Dextons, the Dunkers of the world that want to be featured on my page, the submissions, and having someone post every day. You know, like have, having someone go through my DMs yeah. and my submissions. Yeah. And it also means that I need to start producing more original content, which means I need to be DMing more NBA players and I need to be leveraging my connections of like Swaggy P who I have, who I have an in with, with a guy, super cool guy, Marcus Damas and Tobias Harris and saying, hey, Swaggy P, we should do a collaboration. Like, I think if you did this trick shot, it would be fucking awesome and blow up on viral. And doing that and then breaking it on Dunk and my profiles and then other people are going to aggregate it and it's just going to feed into more and more and more. Have you ever thought about doing your own interview show with NBA players? Yeah. I think the, you'd be really good at that. I think I hope so. Yeah, is that a part of the plan? Yeah, cool. In, in a po- having a dot com or a podcast is a flagship. Yeah, you know, yeah. Of like that's having a, your thing, right? Exactly. Well, that's one thing. It's, it's a it, little different it's, than. Yeah. It's just it's perception, right? Yeah. If you have that flagship, that podcast, you own that. Yeah. You, it's yeah. your content. You own it, and people can. If people aggregate from it, they have to credit you. For sure, and and, and so. All right, so that's that's the next thing. Mm-hmm. What else? What else do you what else do you want to share with us? Just about what makes life interesting for you? What you're excited about? I'm just super excited about building this thing and just helping other people and being able to. I think you have to be. I wasn't satisfied because I wasn't. I wasn't living the full version. I wasn't doing my passion. I wasn't on the right. Well, you path. weren't. You weren't building your thing. I think not everyone has to build their thing, but right. I think for me it was I wasn't building my own stuff. I was building someone else, which was fucking amazing. I right. made some of the best connections I've ever made in my of life. Course. It was a complete right choice. But I think at the end of the day, for people listening, is to just follow your own in- intuition, follow your own instinct, and like whatever feels good to you. That's probably what you should be doing. And I'm not saying like feels good in terms of like just lazy, not being lazy, but like sitting and watching video games. Maybe that is, and then maybe you should get a nine to four or a, a ten to four that you can shine at, but then go home and be with your family or friends, etc., etc. Just like follow your intuition, and also don't listen to me. Follow whatever you're yeah, feeling. I, I might be like, I like that. I read, we were re- researching you earlier, and we yeah. read an article. You said something like that. Yeah. Uh, two more questions. Last question. Yeah. Second, yep. second yep. last question. What do you need right now? From folks that are watching that are very passionate about sports, what kinds of openings or needs or things are you looking for as you build out this business in the next I, phase? I need mutually mutually beneficial club, mutually beneficial partnerships or relationships. I don't need shit from anyone actually. Like I want it if I if you're helping me, I want to help you equally as much. Got it. So if anyone has like if anyone has a connection to Gerald Green, or if they have a connection to a LeBron James type, he follows me on Instagram. Yeah. Anyway, hey. if anyone has a direct connection to LeBron James, I'd be like, cool, I love that. If you want to come with, I fly you out and meet with him, both of us. Some, cool. some similar to that. Like, I just want to be able to. I don't want to owe anyone anything, to be honest. Yeah, to be yeah I totally get that. And and last question: Where can folks find you in the world? We've said many different uh, places they can find you. What's the best ways? Elliot, E L I T. I respond to every single DM. Like I can show you right now. I respond cool. to thousands of DM there. Like if you reach out to me, I'll see it. I might just send a heart if I if I just don't care enough. But like I, I'll try. I'll try <laughs> to. Re- Actually, that's not true. I just just making myself look like I don't know why I did that. I literally respond to every single DM if unless it's like hi then I'll respond to a heart like I respond with this the quick heart you know the heart yeah. that's a hack that you just don't want to respond with. <laughs> this was super weird segment <laughs> find me on Instagram at Elliot follow me dunk no follow me Elliot and, Elliot and DM me there if you see this or hear this dunk. Eli 1L1T 1L1T dunk one any L1. other final Zero thoughts eight. you'd like to share with anyone watching that I, yeah. uh, is watching <laughs> If you're still watching, yeah. if you're still watching this show, thank you so much. Um, like seriously, like everyone watching this, the biggest thing I want to share is to not fake the funk or not pretend to be someone you're not, or not pretend to know something you don't. Like 
it's so easy to front. Everyone in life fronts, but don't front too hard. Like, just don't speak about shit you don't know about. I'm gonna try not to do it. If I do, please call me out. I just, just don't think it's gonna. It's just not good for your, like, for you, for the future. Like, you can say stuff, and in a year and two years, people are just gonna find out and be like, and it's not. I don't think anyone wants to speak about stuff that they don't know. I think people feel pressured by yeah. society and yeah. by other people to achieve certain things or to look a certain way that they start speaking about shit they don't know. It's the worst thing in the world. Yeah. It's not good for anyone because you're giving people, I told this, you're giving people reverse knowledge. You're literally telling people something and how to do it when you don't actually know how to do it yourself. And reverse like, knowledge, I love that. That's and maybe I'm giving the reverse knowledge right now. Who knows? I just... I just no. I think deep, it's good. But yeah. I think it's good advice. I mean, don't 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 advise because. And this is something funny too. Like, there are since there are so many kind of like headline readers. Yeah, it's really dangerous to give reverse knowledge because they they actually are probably going to listen to you exactly and, then, and exactly. Then execute on what you said and like. And it's just a deep. It's a bad negative spiral circle, whatever you yeah. want to call it. Yeah, it just sucks. And also follow your intuition. Your intuition is. I don't think your intuition is ever wrong. Or it might be, but if it is wrong, you're lost on your own terms. Gary said this a couple days ago. Yeah, I keep mentioning him. I just don't want to steal quotes or whatever. I don't want to be the mini Gary Vaynerchuk. I don't want to be any of that shit. I want to be me. So I just want to clarify that. If you follow your intuition and you lose, you lose on your own terms. And there's nothing better than to play on your own terms. Literally. Amen, brother. Dunk Elliot, you were the man. We really appreciate you Thank coming you so in, man. Much. Remember, everyone, it's your hour. It's your life. It's your dreams. Go get it. Because if you don't... Someone nobody, else is. nobody else. Well, my man, thanks for coming in. Cheers, guys.